I am joined by Taylor softball head coach Aaron Bellinger to look back at the 2021 season for her and the Trojans. Aaron, the team went 43 and 18, most wins in a single season in program history. And you cap it off with an amazing run out of the loser's bracket in the Crossroads Lake Tournament. You guys finished runner-up in the tournament to Indiana Wesleyan. And just on the outside of making the national tournament this year, what were your thoughts on the 2021 campaign? Yeah, it was an incredible run at the end of the year. You always ask your teams, or you really always want to play your best when uh, at the end of the year. And you know, I feel that we did that, and we made an incredible run in the tournament. After getting into loser's bracket, um, we were able to beat Mount Vernon, who we hadn't beaten all year, um, and really come out strong against them and beating them and then going on and beating Marion and making a statement there and then beating Indiana Wesley in the first game of the championship game was incredible. And, you know, we couldn't pull it off the second game, but, you know, losing in the bottom of the seventh inning on a sacrifice fly, it, it's tough, but, you know, as a coach, it's, I, I told the girls, there's really nothing else I could have asked of them. They were incredible. They did everything that we asked them to, they grinded it out. It was absolutely incredible. And I am so, so proud of them, but I mean, aside from the tournament, it was an incredible run all year and getting the most wins that we've had, you know, in a single season is such a big accomplishment. And, you know, I don't want them losing in the championship game to, to, you know, be the definition of our season because they were incredible all year long. Seven players named all crossroads league a few weeks ago with Maddie Evans and Emma West earning first team honors. We'll start with Maddie who took a big old eraser to the record books this season with a single season record for wins in the circle and strikeouts at 263. She also had the lowest opponent batting average in a single season. The strikeout total led the Crossroads League and was fourth best in the NAIA, but she also wasn't done there. She also racked up personal bests at the plate in hits, runs scored, doubles, home runs, and RBI. A uh, pretty good year, huh? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a really good year for her. And, you know, we always say, we go back to what we said to her at the beginning of the year, you know, was her having a slow start in previous years. And again, she was determined to not have a slow start this year. And she was just grinding it out all year long, working so hard. She's one of the most hardworking kids I've, I've ever known. And so she was absolutely incredible this year. And I don't even remember everything that you just said, but I mean, all of the records that she broke and, uh, you know, batting, she was just a, a threat on all sides, you know, with her pitching people, uh, teams didn't want to face her. They didn't know how to figure her out. And um, then uh, her up to bat her in the field, you know, it's just all around. She's such a great player. Emma West, the sophomore batted lead off hit 373. She had 81 hits, which is the third most in a single season. She also broke the stolen base record uh, in a single campaign with 36. The hits and stolen base totals were both top eight in the NAI, what was it like to see her perform uh, after her freshman season was shortened because of the pandemic last year? Yeah, they all came out with a fire. You know, they they wanted to make up for lost time. And, and so they were all, you know, Emma included, they were all determined to, you know, do what they couldn't do the year that they, they were canceled. And so for her to come out, break that record, she was determined. That was one thing that we talked about at the beginning of the years. She really wanted to break that record. She wanted to know how many stolen bases that she needed to break that record. And so, you know, we were kind of joking about it all year and, you know, she broke it easily. And I think she's going to want to break her own record next year. So, um, and then with the hits, I mean, it's, it's not just the stolen bases, but you know, it's the hits that she has. She's able to put a bunt down, soft slap, hard slap, swing away. There was one, I don't even remember what game it was, but she decided to swing away. And I mean, she crushed a ball. Unfortunately it was caught, but you know, we all kind of looked at each other like, Oh my gosh, you know, so she can, she can do it all. And so it's really hard for defenses to, to play against her. One of your second team uh, nominees was Lauren. Can I of four Trojans named to the second team all crossroads league? She like Maddie does it both in the circle and at the plate. She had a stellar year career best at the plate and hits doubles, home runs and RBI. And then in the circle, she notched career highs and wins and strikeouts with career lows and opponent batting average and ERA. How much of a benefit is it to have such a veteran presence uh, like Lauren, both in the lineup and in the circle? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, even last year she was on, I mean, I think she was on record to break the pitching wins record maybe last year. And so she, again, it's just on all sides of the ball. She can hit, she can pitch, she can do it all. And so to have a veteran like that, you know, leading our team and being a pitcher and um, being somebody, you know, that has been through it and seen all of that is so beneficial for our team. So beneficial for the girls. And she's really a lead by example type, type of kid. And, and we really, I mean, the girls, the freshmen really benefited from that. 
Two of your best power bats were Kristen Mahalik and Aliyah Rastetter. Kristen missed last year with an injury and came back this year to bat 360, 367. She drove in 38 and tied for the team lead in home runs. And Aliyah started off slow, but then from April 2nd, she hit 398 with six doubles, four triples, 10 home runs, and 34 driven in. Uh, pretty good to have them batting back to back in the middle of the order, right? Oh, so good. I'm glad I made that change. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> we, we talked before about Aaliyah having a slow start, but, you know, she came around and I mean, she was a freshman. And even when she had the slow start, she was hitting the ball really well. And I've said it multiple times, but I mean, when she started to come around, it was a lot of fun. And even thinking back to like Kristen not playing, it, it feels weird because it seems like so long ago and she really didn't play for a long time. You know, she sat out a season, but she was out for, a, you know, a while before that. And um, so to have her bat in the lineup too, I mean, she just, she makes it look so easy. And so, I mean, it's, you know, we, the coaching staff, we laugh about it because I mean, you don't want to change anything about her swing. And she just, again, she makes it look so easy. And uh, with her and Aaliyah back to back, it's, it's pretty dangerous. I feel bad for other teams sometimes. <laughs> really? Do you really feel bad for other teams? No. <laughs> no, no. no it's, a, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> you, you have a, you have a big smile on your face. You see, when you see the two of them, one at, one at the plate and one of the on deck. So like, I like, we might get some runs out of this. Out yeah, of this, maybe. Batters, Hopefully. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of your four, one of your group of seniors saved her best for last, and that was Kara Tucker. She had career highs in almost every offensive category, highlighted by her uh, the first three home runs of her career. She also continued to be one of the best defensive second basemen in the Crossroads League. How special was it to see Kara finish her career in style? It's special, but it's so sad. You know, it's so hard seeing these seniors leave, and those were the girls that were here when I came in, and so that's it was extra special this year. Uh, and it, you know, it's hard to see them leave and. Kara Tucker having the year that she did. I'm so glad that she's able to leave, you know, on a, on a tear, like she did at the end of the, you know, this whole year, not even just the end of the year, but this whole year, she was one of our most reliable hitters. You know, whenever she came up, it just felt like, yeah, she's going to hit a gap or like I, you know, we all had so much confidence in her and she was such an incredible second baseman. It's, it's, it's hard to replace her. Uh, she's probably the best second baseman that I have seen in a very, very long time. And, and so to lose her and not only on the field, but her leadership off the field, she is just a genuine, I mean, hardworking team player. And, and we're really going to miss that on and off the field for sure. Taylor Wilson came back for a fifth season. She earned honorable mention uh, honors from the Crossroads League. What was her impact on the team along with her fellow seniors in Tucker, Kelsey Moody, Jacqueline Riles, Jessica Doctor, and Katie Suits? Yeah, having Taylor come back for an extra year was so special, uh, you know, for her to be able to get that extra year and, and you know, be able to finish on a good note uh, was something I think that really mattered to her. Uh, but for, you know, for the rest of the team, she was always a really good lead by example type of kid, uh, you know, but these last uh, I would say like her senior year and then her fifth year, she even, I mean, she started to be a really good vocal leader too. And so to be able to have that for our team and for our freshmen was really, really good for us. And she was just, she's just a special kid. And we're going to, I mean, we're, we're really going to miss her too. All of them, you know, all of our seniors, not just, I mean, you mentioned the other seniors and um, it's, it's some of them didn't get as much playing time as others, but I mean, playing time, we hope doesn't define them. And we, you know, the things that we did off the field, um, the things that they did off the field were just so meaningful. Uh, and so to have that gone, you know, we just hope that those upperclassmen can make up for, you know, what we're going to miss with these seniors that are leaving. Aaron, it was a, a lot of fun, particularly those last couple of weeks of the season. Uh, thanks for letting us be, be a part of the ride and enjoy some time off. And we'll talk to you before the 2022 season gets here. Thanks, Rick. That is head coach Aaron Bellinger joining me today. For more information on Taylor softball, just log on to taylortrojans.com.